Hey guys, and welcome to this video on how to interpret a scatter plot, a continuation of this section of the course that's basically relating to further maths, but it's important to pretty much every mathematical topic out there. If uh, you are new to my channel, hi, welcome. My name's Darren Masguru, and uh, it's my job to hopefully make this a lot easier for you to understand. And yes, we're going to interpret scatter plots. If you haven't already done so, and I know it's early in the video, but if you can click the subscribe button, it just lets me know you're watching. Greatly appreciated that you're out there sort of hoping to get better at mathematics, and hopefully I can help you do that. Alternatively, there is mathsguru.com up there where all these videos are basically in a far more sensible order and by textbook with downloadable notes. So head over there. It is absolutely free to sign up. Um, and hopefully it'll provide you everything you need to ace this exam. Now, how to interpret a scatter plot? We have already looked at the idea of how to use our calculator to draw a scatter plot. And if I bring back the calculator display from that previous video that I've just recorded, then there you go. We have put some data in there that had sort of participation rate and hours and a scatter plot. But how would we describe those dots at the moment? Is there a way of, you know, is there a pattern? Is there some sort of association? Well, the great thing about scatter plots is you can use three different things to actually describe them. Four if we include outliers, let's not rush ahead. So in previous lessons, we have looked at how to associate various things. We've had uh, categorical and categorical, categorical and numerical, and now we're dealing with numerical and numerical, because that is what the rest of this course is going to look at. We've drawn some scatter plots. We're now going to look at describe them. There are four main types of patterns in scatter plots, and I've listed them here. Number one, no clear pattern. That is where the kisses are quite literally all over the place. It's like my sort of eight month old daughter had just put loads of kisses all over a page. There's no pattern to that whatsoever. Dots seem to be heading with a linear positive gradient. Now we know that gradient, because we've been dealing with this previously, is where a positive gradient is where effectively it seems to be sloping up. Uh, dots seem to be heading with a linear negative gradient. All right, so linear again, what does the word linear mean? Line, so linear negative gradient would suggest that my points are in some sort of line, this time heading down and dots which seem to have a non-linear association. So non-linear would suggest that we have some sort of curve, for example. Now, we will be dealing with all of these and how to analyze them throughout the rest of this course. So summary book, vitally important at this moment in time. So we need to be able to describe scatter plots using the correct terminology. And as we say here, we say direction, form and strength. Now I put outliers there second. Generally speaking, you will discuss those or you'll add a sentence to your report outside of the direction, form and strength. So you'll generally say there are no clear outliers or there are outliers, end of. Now, if there are outliers, you'll give an example of one, but let's not rush ahead. So we're gonna deal with these in turn, direction, form, strength, come back to outliers. So let's talk about direction. <laughs> direction. The puns don't get any better. I know, I'm sorry. But we're looking for the idea of is this thing sloping up, sloping down, or is there absolutely no association whatsoever? So going back to those four graphs I did a moment ago, and here's some examples from the Cambridge Essential, sorry, the Cambridge Further Maths textbook series. In this situation, we can see that basically those dots appear all over the place. Yes, there doesn't seem to be any of them all heading towards and upwards all heading towards the downwards. And so in this situation, because there is no consistent change in the value of the response variable when the value of the explanatory variable increases, there is no association. Now, generally speaking, we like to describe things as, as age increases height increases. Now that situation, that would lead to some sort of positive gradient, right? Some sort of positive association. Likewise, if age was increasing, but height was decreasing, then hopefully you would notice that that would be coming down the other way. So that is no association. Then let's look at an example of points drifting upwards in a positive association. Did you notice how these all seem to be centering around some sort of line? They're all sort of going that way up. Well, there we go. That is a positive association, positive gradient, all of that type of stuff. Negative association, well, let's just draw a line there. That appears to be drifting downwards. So again, explain this in a slightly different way. As my height increases, my weight is also increasing. 
beautiful language there to be able to describe this. Here, with my negative association, as my participation rate, or let's just not RP, as my participation rate is increasing, then what do we notice? My hours worked are decreasing, and gone are the days where this was mandatory. We had to say this, but I still like the language. So that is direction, all right? So direction is positive, negative, or no association. Now let's talk about form. Basically, all they're asking here is, is it linear or nonlinear? This is perfect for your summary book as well, yeah? So you should almost have a table in terms of direction, form, and in a moment we'll have strength. So what do we notice here? Well, linear or nonlinear, what do we notice here? These data items appear to be heading sort of in a linear way. They're sort of bouncing around either side of some sort of imaginary line. Likewise, this one here, not necessarily as clear, but generally speaking, we would say that was linear. But not here. We would notice that these data items append, attend, or uh, 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 what am I trying to say? They uh, appear, there's the word, to be curving. Uh, this is about the ninth video I've recorded today. I think my brain is going a little bit mushy. My apologies. All right, so now we have something else to describe, linear or nonlinear. The last one uh, is strength, and that's really important. Now, again, this uh, table I'm going to show you in a moment helps us describe the strength of a relationship. Now, the way we do that is we use something called the correlation coefficient, and this can all be worked out from a scatter graph. I'll show you very quickly in a moment, although this is going to be a lesson coming up. This correlation coefficient can also be called Pearson's correlation coefficient all right so pearson's they'll put that into an exam to try and throw you because some of you go well, who's pearson where did he come from all right or she could be when we look at a scatter graph we can do a mathematical calculation on all of those points and come up with a value that falls somewhere between minus one and one negative values are for negative linear associations so for graphs that slope down we have a negative value. Now that's normal because we know that graphs that slope down have a negative gradient. Graphs that slope up have a positive value. And hopefully you would realize that a zero value would mean that there was no association whatsoever. This table is vitally important. It's in the Cambridge book, it's gonna be in these notes, and by all means, copy it down. But we can now classify scatter plots and describe them using the values of R that we get from calculations. And if we have a value of R that falls between 0.75 and 0.99, then what we can say now is it has a positive, sorry, a strong positive association. Your further math exam will be looking for this specific wording. So it is a no brainer to me. You can just put this in your summary book, see the question and bang, thank you very much. Here's an easy mark. We'll notice that the words weak moderate and strong are used. So we can have weak positive, moderate positive, and strong positive. We can have weak negative, moderate negative, and strong negative. And so let's have some examples. Here are some examples of graphs with linear relationships. Now I haven't got values of R on all of them uh, because I'm gonna put them on now. So here we go. This first graph here, what do you reckon? No association whatsoever. So in this situation, we would expect an R value of zero. This here is a perfect straight line. Those points are perfect. And so in this case, my R value would be one. That R value of one means they are perfectly in a straight line. This one here would be an R value of minus one. Why? Because this one here is sloping down. This one is sloping up. So this would have a positive R value. This will have a negative R value. The rest of them, well, these two graphs here, R equals minus 0.3. Yes, minus because these graphs seem to be heading in a downward slope. Why is it minus 0.3? Well, they're fairly far away from that graph, right? They're fairly spread out. And so the more spread out they are, the smaller this value is, or the closer it's gonna to be to zero. Here, you'll notice that this here is a positive value of R. It's 0.9, why? Because those points are much, much closer to that line. Now, one of the things that the exam will also ask you is to make sure that when you are using uh, scatter plots that you are appreciating, or when you're using the value of R, that your variable is numeric, the association is linear, and that there are no outliers. Hold on a moment, what is an outlier? Well, an outlier we've met before, it's that value that just doesn't seem to fit with everything else. And an example in the textbook 
That was an outlier, apparently. Go figure. Mm, I'm sure in an exam there'd be a more clear outlier. But again, if we were looking at this, we would have to describe that data as, well, basically no association and there's some random outlier. Now, there is a VCAR question here that basically used this type of information or this type of uh, theory. And so let's center it slightly better. The data in the table shows a sample of actual temperatures and apparent temperatures recorded. What can you notice? Well, we've got a scatter plot here. We have an R squared value that comes in a little bit of a later lesson. And it says use the scatter plot to describe the association between apparent temperature and actual temperature in terms of strength, direction of form. Boop, boop, boop. As far as I'm concerned, that is just flashing lights. Open my summary book and start to talk about it. So what do we notice? Well, direction, it is positive. Uh, direction uh, form is linear and strength well how do we get the strength well what I can say is I actually know that this value gives me an R value of 0 0.98 and then I would have gone back to my table and looked up so let's scroll back up sorry about the scrolling 0 0.98 says I have a strong positive association so strong and positive so the uh, we've already got the word positive so we would write the word strong, and actually the exam was looking for those three words there to get that one mark. Didn't make any mention of outliers, there aren't any outliers. You could have put a sentence that says there are no outliers, but it wasn't asking for that, it wanted strength, direction, and form. And there we go, bang. These questions are fabulous if you know the stuff. And here we are at the end of how to interpret a scatter plot. Thank you very much for watching. If you haven't already done so, there is a circle there for you to subscribe. Spread the word if you would be so kind and get people to realize these videos are there. Hopefully it's been helpful. If it has, leave a comment below. Otherwise, I'm going to call it a day and see you in our next video. Take care. Be well.